That's horrible. Horrible. Horrifying. This is what a network bottleneck looks like. So while we're waiting for our newly set up trashy NAS to copy all the 8 terabytes of data onto it that it needs to contain at a, a less than impressive pace, uh, we have some logistics to consider. Because the server room has quite temporarily been upstairs in my storage closet for quite a while and this is not the place for a, a giant UPS and be a server sitting right in front of a door where you need to go inside to access uh, the top of a house. So all of this stuff has to move and I really want to get rid of this huge power hogging UPS with its two completely ruined batteries. So we're going to be moving the server down to the basement where it'll be much happier than in this hot southern facing room upstairs. So when we enter the deep dark dungeons below we have the old workshop. Uh, this room is going to be repurposed for a more heavy duty workshop to use. I'm having to like do uh, metal work and stuff in here. So I don't want to have a sensitive server in here. However, we also have these three concrete blocks basically. So this is a storage room which has some shelving set up. So this is not very suitable. However, shut up. This one just has my laundry baskets and uh, a shelf back there, a deep in the Blair Witch project. And this is going to be a rather suitable place for the server. I do think it's uh, uh, quite secluded. It's very cool. The walls in here, that's an outer wall in the back. Uh, and uh, that's never over 10 degrees C, even in the middle of summer. So this is going to be a very nice, cool place for uh, basically any gear. Uh, however, the, the reason it's so dark in here is because there's no electrics uh, at all in here. Uh, so we're going to have to arrange for that. Uh, not a huge problem. Uh, also no networking in here. We have power coming here. We have, uh, this is uh, power from the basement breaker. This is power from my UPS, my big UPS. Uh, so I'm thinking we could probably just uh, drill a hole in the wall there, hole in the wall there, and uh, pull in power from the UPS, or maybe just uh, around the wire and take it in there. I don't know what's gonna be most practical. We do lose a hole if we just bring it around and in over the door, but uh, then again, we it also leaves the ability to get electrics into this room. But we'll have to think about that, uh, but yeah, time to get working. Oh yeah, we do actually have networking coming down here in this cord, uh, which for the time being solely goes to my uh, automatic backup vault PC, so this thing uh, only runs backups and it's gonna be replaced with a new server and moved to a different spot so we've got networking, uh, the wire is routed uh, horribly, it's just zip tied to these heating pipes going through here, jumping back to the electrical wiring through this abomination around there, hanging in the air there and going through a hole in the wall there, then it's just even worse upstairs. But uh, if, if we have time, we're going to be rewriting that through uh, that uh, pass through there. Uh, I think we can squeeze a, a network cord through and that's going to go straight up to our networking gear uh, on, the, on the top floor. But uh, that, that's secondary to actually just getting electrics uh, into the, the room there so we can actually power our server. Because this cord does work right now, it's just incredibly ugly. And ugly is a theme that we'll be going with for this project. So that's our channel for wiring going to the new server room and 
It's an almost long enough Klaas Olsen wire conduit thing uh, that's stapled to the door frames because I have no way of attaching that to the concrete without making a huge mess of it. Uh, the wiring then is hanging there, going to a power outlet and a big loom of network cable cat 5 going into cat 6 and then going upstairs so uh, that's horrible but it will work so let's have a look at what we have achieved thus far so i have painstakingly drilled a hole through here it's no fun making holes in these walls because they are a very soft kind of concrete which just crumble so you hit a b small stone stones like uh, well rather large uh, stones and this stuff actually and uh, uh, it'll just push your drill to the side so you end up with a hole that's kind of uh, zigzagging its way through and the wall here was uh, surprisingly thick it's you know a good uh, 12 centimeters or so but we got through in the end and may i present to you our server laundry room so for flooring i just uh, ripped some of my uh, plastic uh, things out of out of a shower because uh, no one ever goes into that corner anyway it's just sitting there being all moist all the time i uh, pressure washed it to get rid of a horrible wet smell of that room Ugh. and uh, it's doing a pretty good job uh, the reason i have this stuff is uh, these rooms can have a bit of water actually seeping in uh, through the floor uh, because we are underground uh, and this uh, house is not uh, really on a good foundation it's uh, basically got dirt right on the other side of that wall there's no gravel or anything they didn't do that way back then so if it's really really super moist in the ground we can have like a line of water a small puddle on the floor here nothing that actually matters but you don't want your service sitting in a literal puddle uh, i have also reconfigured my horrible cheap shelf to turn into something rather useful uh, oh. remounted the uh, shelves there for fitting up a monitor reasonably nice monitor dual vga inputs that's why we got that one and uh, yeah just got rid of a shelf so we can fit uh, all our gear underneath here it's going to stick out a fair bit uh, but uh, it should be pretty decent to actually measure it up so that we can even fit the giant ancient case there if we want to use that thing. So we should be able to do three or four servers in here, well, no problem. No problem at all. And we do have a vent actually. Uh, if it, we'll probably want to have this uh, uh, slightly open when we actually put this room in service. Uh, problem with these uh, wasps build nests in these so I probably should vacuum this out right away so uh, the previous year's nest is uh, uh, done and dusted because else we get uh, proper infestation in the servers so uh, as far as pay is concerned I have just uh, pulled a black rubber cord in there and uh, terminated it in a normal power outlet that's uh, bolted to the door frame because again horrible concrete difficult to maintain we have a small 13 watt uh, fluorescent light providing ample lighting for troubleshooting purposes that's our horrifying hole that's the way it goes with these walls you can't help it even if you have a proper gear i mean i have an sds so yeah that's as far as we're going to be getting tonight. I need to find a small UPS to have just locally here in case I accidentally uh, rip the power cord out of a wall over there or something overloads the big UPS that everything's connected to. Uh, very nice to have local backup power just in case since it's going to be some pretty uh, critical stuff running in here. And a UPS we have acquired plus a whole lot more so we're pretty much ready to move the service in fact they're beyond the things we're missing so let's have a quick look at uh, how this has come about uh, so uh, for starters i've just uh, run an extension cord uh, flying in the ceiling there uh, hanging 
from a, a rather Indian couple of straps there and going down to the rack uh, and that is this lower extension cord here which is going straight to the big UPS in the other room. Now connected to that we have this uh, switchable one which is basically just for the monitor uh, which apparently is a copier but never mind that and I want to be able to switch the monitor uh, off and on uh, just so that it, it's not connected to a mains and backup power and everything when no one's using it because this is a standby power supply it can fail it can it actually fail the short once I've repaired this monitor uh, so yeah I don't want this thing to go short again and take out the big GPS that's powering everything in the house basically so this will be pretty much always be off and I can hook various KVM switches and stuff if I need to up to there uh, so this is uh, a small 8 port to dumb t plex switch I picked it out of a trash a while ago it's a pretty modern one uh, replaced all the caps in it uh, including the power supply with the high reliability Japanese cap and it seems to work fine uh, I'm quite sure if it's going to be quite reliable and above all it just uses one watt from the grid including the power supply and everything just sitting idle for probably a couple of watts when it's loaded down with everything, but it's very efficient compared to my old switch, which used 7 watts. That's, you know, that's quite a lot. That was just sitting idle as well. Uh, the UPS in question is an APC SMT750i, uh, and uh, this one's an other one. Also, replaced by caps, and they seem to get bad. Caps on the main board, making the main power regulator go bad, probably go unstable. Uh, so this should be working just fine because a couple of really crappy batteries in it uh, but this thing is basically only here so that I can if need be uh, disconnect this power cord and move it to another outlet or something like that or if I need to disconnect it over there I can just plug it in and plug it back in uh, I'm going to set the service up so that they automatically turn off if they've been on battery for 30 seconds in no matter what uh, because this is just for super intermittent things and ensuring a uh, safe power off uh, to save the file systems. Uh, so I have used some wire uh, channeling to uh, keep all this spaghetti in check because we actually have a shit in the Ethernet cords uh, despite just having two servers. Well, that's going to be free for a bit here. Uh, so we've got, I've just got this stuff bolted to uh, the shelf here and we have a slot for all the and comes out this is going to be the uh, NAS here uh, in this corner and the Windows server is going to go roughly around here with some spacing in between uh, and uh, yeah just where I'm coming out the uh, VGA cords are made by super short cable co so they can't go in the slot because they just go pretty much there if I try so rip cable management uh, now the network in here is going to be pretty intense you see, there, 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 there's going to be a maximum free service here, but we've got a shit ton more network kills. And that's because I've got, got dual gigabit Ethernet ports and no 10 GB uh, on the servers. So I'm going to do a little pretend uh, storage area network here. I've got this labeled server and NAS SAN. Uh, and these are going to be used with uh, just to basically hook the server up to the NAS and for running backups to the backup PC which should actually be in the SAN area over here because that's mostly going to be just chugging backups and then we have the LAN cords here uh, so these are some different uh, IP address ranges these are 10.2.2.2 uh, 10.2.2x and these are 10.1.1x so I have it slightly separated just to, uh, for convenience uh, so I can use uh, all the low range addresses for various stuff on the network without clogging them up with the storage area network stuff which doesn't need to be accessed from anywhere else actually and this is our incoming LAN from upstairs. So hopefully this poor little switch is going to be able to handle all the data going through it. It could be a couple of gigabits a second uh, on a busy day. Uh, but I think it's going to be fine. I, I don't think we're going to bottleneck anything. And as a final touch, we have an ST3000DM001 platter, just to remind ourselves of 
everything that can go wrong in the world. But for the time being, the only thing wrong in here is that uh, we don't have any servers. So uh, let's uh, get uh, heavy lifting and uh, take care of that. Wow. Sure, it's quiet in here without those two things running. Jeez, I've almost got used to them. Feels lonely. And there we have them. All ready to go. Is that not a thing of beauty? So we have all the wiring neatly tucked into the channels, all of it that's not a, of necessary trimming a length. We have our dual even cords going into each server. Well, that's bloody well invisible, but you can see it on the NAS there, which has a bit of spaghetti. The Windows server there is a real whore. It uh, takes all of the plugs since it's going to do the UPS, and since it's running Windows, it uh, gets dibs on the keyboard and monitor because that's probably going to be the one with the most issues. However, we do have power to everything. Monitors. In standby, ready to go. All we have to do is press the button. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. These actually have identical system, but I don't know which one. Well, we're obviously watching the free NAS one there. Eh? Yeah, let's choose the other VGA. Ah, we'll have a Windows server. Beautiful. Yeah, it sucks that the source select is garbage on this thing. Have to hold this in forever. But it does work. Saves us a kid of KVM. That's going to be pretty much it. Can I wait for those guys to beat up? I have installed a power meter for the whole room so we can keep an eye on our power usage, which this one's actually got logging too, so it logs the total amount of power used. It's pretty hard right now since the monitor's on, the light is on, the UPS is actually charging the battery, it's about 50 watts and both the servers are beating up, so I'm expecting this to stay below 100 watts in normal operation once everything's settled down. So we'll have to see what that pans out to in practice. Fingers crossed, less than 100. So there we go, I think we're pretty much done here. I don't think either server errored out. We have a bunch of lights on the switch. And I found a thermometer to install, so we're starting out at uh, this one's been lying in the other room. It's a reading a bit high. It's about 15 in here. Like this room is seriously cold. It's proper cold to be here. Uh, so we're going to see just how warm this room gets if perhaps these walls uh, manage to dissipate enough uh, power to not have to even open this up. That could very well be the case. That would be nice. Then we'd get less dust in here since it wouldn't be able to fill the air properly. But for the time being, I don't need that anymore. I think we're pretty much done. Oh yeah, don't need that anymore either. Beautiful little lights. <coughs> Cheerio. And ah oh yeah, power draw is not going to be an issue. So we're pretty much nodding at 100 watts with the uh, the UPS is still charging the batteries and in line interactive mode. So there's going to be about 30 to 40 watts getting chopped off of that uh, before we're done. Well, let's say 20 just so that I'm being generous. But yeah, we're going to be under 100. That's for certain. Beautiful. Oh, and if you didn't know about these APC UPSs, the power meter is very sneaky because it doesn't include the UPS itself, the more you know.